and welcome to this introduction to Saturn, the creative saturation and distortion plugin from Falfilter. Saturn comes with a wide range of factory presets to try out, ranging from subtle saturation or enhancement to full on sonic mayhem. But it's also very easy to dial in sounds directly. So let's pick the clean preset to start with and take a look around the interface. The large drive knob in the middle seems an obvious place to start. Turning this up introduces a gentle saturation effect that helps to thicken the sound and in this case makes these rather clean and polite synth drums sound harder and more aggressive. The field to the left provides a list of different distortion types. The clean tube setting at the top is gentler still, adding a rich sheen to the sound. While warm tube is more obviously coloured with a fat bottom end. Broken tube, on the other hand, is rather more extreme and gets quite filthy when the drive reaches about 50%. In a similar manner, we find three tape modes below, ranging from the subtle and gentle clean tape mode through the more strongly coloured warm tape to old tape, which isn't subtle at all, even with the drive knob all the way down. The mix knob underneath the band bypass button allows you to blend in some dry signal if you want to tame the effect further. Let's jump to the bottom of the list and try the destroy mode. This is a combination of bit crushing, sample rate reduction and clipping, and it's aptly named. Even just a tiny bit of drive causes drastic digital sounding distortion. And settings above about the halfway mark are barely recognisable. Rectify is also quite drastic. Once again, the sound changes quite dramatically, even with drive all the way down. And a small amount of drive can go a long way. The smudge mode is quite unusual. This mode starts totally clean with the drive knob at zero. But turning it up introduces strange and unusual time smearing effects, unlike any conventional distortion. I'm using the stereo VSD version of the plug, so the drive knob has an extra pan ring around the outside, which we can use to set different amounts of drive for the left and right channels to create interesting stereo effects. I'm going to switch this back to the warm tube setting. And notice the dynamics knob underneath. This innocent looking control can smoothly expand your dynamic range when turned to the left. Or compress it when turned to the right. The intelligent and program dependent algorithm behind the scenes will cope well with most material, even when squashing it really hard. OK, let's switch to another example, a clean DI'd guitar. And let's pick the first of the amp settings, which provides glassy, clean amp sounds with the drive knob set low, or bluesy overdrive with higher settings. The sliders to the right provide simple amp style bass, middle, treble, and presence controls to allow you to adjust the tone. The next amp type can also do bluesy overdrives, but turning the drive knob up gets us into crunchy rock and roll territory, as the name implies. The last three amp modes offer more modern, fully saturated distortions, suitable for heavy power chord parts, or for lead playing. Lead amp sounds smooth and creamy. while Screaming Amp is spikier with more of an edge. And Power Amp is all about dense, dark mid-range. These more heavily distorted tones might benefit from HQ mode at the bottom, which switches in eight times oversampling to reduce aliasing. Okay, another example. 
This time a very simple square wave bass part from Fab Filter 1. The part is mono and I want to keep it that way. So I've loaded the mono VST version of Saturn, which lacks the pan rings around the drive and level knobs. I want to create a multi-band setup. So I'll start by moving my mouse up to the top of the interface, where a plus symbol appears. Clicking this creates a set of crossover filters. So we're now running two separate distortion bands for low and high signals. The handles provide an easy way to adjust the volume of a band. And clicking a handle will slide the controls over to show that band's settings. I'm going to tune the crossover to isolate the low meaty bass part of the sound in band 1. Then pick the warm tape mode and crank the drive to add more low end weight. I might also dial in some compression to keep those low frequencies more solid and consistent. Now let's select the mid high band instead. I can now set a different drive amount for this band. Or I could even switch it to a different distortion type entirely. I'll be adventurous and pick the power amp distortion type. And our bass part has now taken on an entirely different character. Let's take this idea a step further and click to create another crossover for a three band setup. Then I'll select band three and pick lead amp instead and crank the drive up a bit more. Then maybe I'll select the mid and high bands together and turn their levels down a touch to avoid overwhelming the bass. Another example, this time a transgated pad sound from Twin 2. I'll pick the clean tube mode and turn up the drive. But notice that the sound starts to get a bit messy with high drive settings as the original waveforms were already very complex and rich in harmonics. I'll therefore click the top of the display to create the maximum six bands, as each band is now distorting just a narrow range of frequencies. The result is much cleaner sounding, while still providing extra thickness and density. You might want to switch the interface to wide mode at the bottom right when running lots of bands like this. As this is a pad sound, it might make sense to select just band 1 and turn the gain all the way down to completely kill everything below about 200 Hz and leave plenty of room for the bass parts. Our source sound is also stereo, so it might also make sense to switch the stereo mode to mid-side at the bottom. This will change the stereo imaging subtly, but also provides other options. I'll select the three bands in the mid and upper mid range and turn up the pan ring around the level knob, which you will notice is now labelled M and S rather than L and R. Turning these knobs up shifts the energy in this region out towards the sides of the mix and away from the middle where it might interfere with lead parts such as vocal. Okay, I'll select just one band now and turn up the feedback knob. This feeds a delayed copy of this band back into the main input and is a bit like putting a microphone in front of a speaker to create a feedback loop. The frequency knob adjusts the delay time as if you were changing the distance between the speaker and the mic and so changes the resulting feedback frequency. I'm going to turn the feedback level down a bit so it's just short of ringing at its resonant frequency. Then I'll click the modulation tab to show the modulation section at the bottom which is where the fun really starts. I'll click the plus sign and create a new XLFO modulator. Then click the source drag button and drag a connection to the feedback frequency knob. And the feedback delay is now being modulated by the XLFO. Let's slow it right down and turn down the modulation depth a touch to create a slow sweeping comb filter effect. Let's try another modulation example. I'll switch back to the bass sound we dialed in earlier. Create an XLFO again, but this time link it to the mid-high crossover frequency and set the XLFO to BPM sync, perhaps with a dotted or triplet offset. And we now get sweeping wire type effects as the mid-range oscillates between the two different amp settings. Finally, let's see what extra modulation fun we can have with our original drum example. I'll click the plus sign again but this time add a new envelope follower 
and set the attack time to its fastest setting. Then drag a connection to the bass tone control slider. Immediately we get an extra punchy low end, which I can fine tune by adjusting the modulation depth and the envelope release time. That's all I've got time for on this video. As you can see, the possibilities are almost endless, and I've only had time to scratch the surface. But you can get more information from the detailed user manual, and you can enable interactive help hints to get a pop-up description of each control when you hover over it. Thanks for watching.